Welcome to the Daily Tanya. Today is Wednesday, the second day of Nisan. Today is the yard site of the Rebbe Rashab, the fifth Lubavitcher Rebbe, passed away in 1920. We call him the Rambam of Hasidus. He gave, before he passed away, he said, Irgei in Himmel, and the Ksovim I go up in heaven and I leave you my manuscripts. And indeed, there's many uh, books that we have now. And whatever we learn in the Tanya and other things in Hasidus is the depth of it is much due to the teachings of the Rebbe Hashab. So may his merit protect us and the teaching and learning of his Hasidus and the Alter Rebbe's Hasidus help to lead to the coming of Mashiach, as the Baal Shem Tov says. Learning these teachings is what Mashiach is all about. That's what that will bring Mashiach. So let's begin with Tzedakah. G'dayla Tzedakah. Shema Kerebi Segeula Tzedakah brings Mashiach closer. And we continue in chapter 39. And we spoke yesterday about, in the last few days, about the different levels of where the Neshama goes, what world does our neshama, our soul, reach after it leaves this world. And we explained that there is different levels of souls, starting that of the highest levels of neshamas, like the patriarchs, which is way beyond our understanding and our reach, their souls reach to the world of Atsilus. The world of Atsilus, this world where godliness is revealed, there's nothing else. And that is because their service of Hashem in this world was like a Merkava, like a chariot that they had no, they didn't have their own will. The entire life they were completely devoted, every part of them, to Hashem. And then we said there is the souls that serve Hashem in this world with love and fear that is intellectually generated by understanding the greatness of Hashem, they reach a very uh, palpable feeling of love and and fear of Hashem. And that's how they serve Hashem. So these souls reach in the level of the world of Berea, which is the world of the godly intellect. Then we have the Neshamas that are not capable of reaching that level, the only way the serve Hashem is by arousing the natural love that they have, that everyone has. Every Jew has this natural love, except that we don't feel it. But when you think about it, and you arouse this natural love to Hashem, and you serve Hashem, you do the Torah mitzvahs with this love that you awakened, this these neshamas reach to the world of Yitzir, the world of the formation. This is the godly, uh, the world where the godly emotions, emotive attributes are revealed. And we also said something which is important to understand that when we're saying that the neshamas reach those levels, whether in Atzilas, Beria, Yitzir, Asiya. The neshamas reach in the level of, he calls it the chitzenius olamat, the out, out external part of the of the worlds. But the mitzvahs, the Torah and mitzvahs themselves, that we do, that we study, they go up to the inner part, to the es- the spheres, the godliness, the revealed godliness that is there, because the Torah and mitzvahs that they do is one with Hashem. It's God's will, and that is one with Hashem. That's why they reached the, the Torah and the mitzvahs themselves reached the the inner part of the of these worlds, and the neshama benefits from the ray of the shine of the Torah and mitzvahs that they did, that they studied, and they performed in this world. This is what we said in short. And the question is, why is it important to know? Why is it important to understand which level, what is the reward, which level is our soul going to go? Okay, it's nice to know, but isn't that something which is 
we shouldn't be looking for. After all, it says in the Mishnah, do not be like servants who serve their master excuse me and and their goal is to get the reward getting the reward is something that should not be our goal our goal should be just serving Hashem so why is it important to know all these details so the Alter is going to explain because the reward of our mitzvahs shows about the mitzvah itself. Meaning, sometimes people work and they get the reward, but the reward has nothing to do with the work, what they do. If you get a paycheck at the end of the week, and you see the amount of money what you got, can I tell what type of work you did? I can't, because there's nothing to do. The reward is nothing. Is, is not a direct result of your work. But when it comes to the mitzvah, to do a mitzvah, the reward is the mitzvah itself. <clears throat> the mitzvah that you did, that goes up in the higher world, <clears throat> and your neshama enjoys the godly light that comes from this mitzvah, so that is the reward is from the mitzvah itself that you do. Therefore, it is important to know the reward, not because we're working, serving Hashem, because we're anticipating the reward, but it helps us to understand how our, our mitzvahs should be done. That if it can be done in a way of awakening the inner love, you should do it this way. If you can do it in a way that even greater that you're able to generate love out of understanding the greatness of Hashem, try to do it that way. Obviously, the highest level is not something, not in our level to talk about, the level of completely being a chariot to Hashem, not having our own will. This is only the very, very holy tzaddikim. So that's what Alter Rebbe says. <clears throat> that this is how we know how to elevate our mitzvahs. And we do it in a better way, in a more with feeling of love and fear of Hashem, it elevates the mitzvah itself, becomes in a greater level, and it elevates, goes up to Hashem. Let's see inside what Alta Rebbe says. V'ine, <coughs> says Alta Rebbe, mitzvah, mitzvah. The reward of the mitzvah is the mitzvah itself. So unlike wages paid to a laborer, for example, which are no index of the nature of the work performed. The reward for a mitzvah, meaning the, re the revelation of godliness experienced by the soul that performed the mitzvah is actually the fruit of the mitzvah itself. The revelation consists of a ray of the godly light emitted by the mitzvah. Pirush says the Alter Rebbe, "Shemischara This means that we can know the essential nature and rank of the mitzvah by its reward, by the nature of the light generated by the mitzvah and revealed to the soul as its reward. What we just explained. Now, when we're talking about the levels the different levels, talking about the highest level are those souls of the eight patriarchs that you reach to the level of Atzillus, one with Hashem. This is something which is uh, <clears throat> hidden matters. It's not in our level to understand. Now we will not concern ourselves with explaining hidden matters. Meaning <clears throat> the great tzaddikim who are at the level of a chariot, whose divine service comes under the heading of hidden matters, because it transcends understanding, it's beyond us. What we should try to understand is something that is closer to us. Only with those matters revealed to us, to which man must aspire. Only with those levels of divine service which may and ought to 
be attained by every Jew as follows. One must know with certainty that the essential nature and rank of divine service with fear and love revealed in the heart the kind of fear and love that is derived from understanding and knowledge of the greatness of the blessed and safe. And of which it was said earlier that the reward for divine service motivated by such love and fear is on the level of the world of Berea. So therefore we understand that this is where the place where the mitzvah reaches. Mekoyma beyut sviras de bria is from this reward. We know that its place, meaning the level of such service of mitzvahs performed with such motivation, is in the ten sefirot of Berea. The ten attributes of Berea, as we said before, that the mitzvahs itself are in the inner part of the of the world of Berea, the part of the sefiras, the part of the god the revealed godliness. <coughs> So that is the when the love and fear is generated by understanding, by contemplating on the greatness of Hashem. Then, and the service motivated by natural fear and love, those who are not able to contemplate and, and, and develop such love, but ex, accept what they do is develop love and fear out of their revealing their natural love to Hashem, and that is being revealed. A hidden love in one's mind. Not emotions that experience in the heart and a mental awareness of one's inborn love and fear of God. Of which it was said earlier that such service is awarded in the world of Yetzirah. So this, he says, the Yitzfiras, the Yitzira, from this award we know that its place is in the ten Sephiras of Yitzira. This is when we're talking about serving Hashem with, with love and fear, whether it's intellectually motivated or emo- motivated by the natural love. However, if one does a mitzvah, studies Torah and does mitzvahs, but without any awakening, any arousing, any love, not only the revealed love in the heart, but even in his mind. As we said in the earlier lessons, that sometimes it's not easy to arouse a palpable love, but at least you can arouse a love in your mind, meaning a conviction in your mind by by understanding that this is your natural connection to Hashem and you want to do this mitzvah. And you have a strong conviction in the heart. But if you don't arouse not even that part, then that mitzvah that you do does not rise up above and remains down here. So it says, But divine service performed without arousing one's fear and love to a revealed state even in, in one's mind, the Hainer. Meaning that the service is done without arousing the natural love hidden in one's heart so that it will emerge from the hidden recesses of the heart. To be revealed at least in one's conscious mind and in the latency of his heart so that it might evoke, if not passionate fervor, then at least a mental resolve to cleave to God by fulfilling the mitzvahs. So if you manage to do that, at least, then yes, you elevate in this mitzvah. But if you don't manage to even awake that conviction in your mind, <clears throat> you just do the mitzvah, just a dry mitzvah, and the love that you have remains concealed, then you're not elevating that mitzvah. If instead the love remains hidden in the heart, as in its native state, 
as it was before the divine service, when it was surely concealed, not expressing itself in divine service. If the love is similarly hidden when he engages in divine service, and the mitzvahs that he does are in no way affected by the love, then, says the Alter Rebbe, that work, that service, remains in the separated world, in this world. Such service remains below in this world of separation in the level called the externality of the worlds, as opposed to the sephiris, which are the internal aspects of the worlds. So the mitzvah itself remains in the chitzenius, in the externality of the worlds. It has not it has not the power to rise and to be absorbed in God's unity, meaning the ten holy sephiris. As it says in the Tikuni Zohar, the Belodechilu Urechimu Loi Parcha La Ela Vela Yachlo La Salka or Lamekam Kodum Hashem. In the Zoya, that without fear and love, it does not fly upward, and it cannot rise to stand before God. As explained at length further, that love and fear are the wings of one's divine service, lacking the wings, the wings, it cannot soar aloft, cannot soar up high. So this is, gives us an understanding why it is important to understand what the mitzvah is, what we do, what is the reward of the mitzvah, because now we know what type of mitzvah we have, what type of mitzvah we're supposed to have. The Alter Rebbe said that there are certain souls that are standing in Gan Eden 500 years, <coughs> and yet they don't know anything from the real meaning the essence of godliness. Because when you serve Hashem, you do Torah mitzvahs, yes, you do the mitzvahs in a dry way, yes, you go up to Gan Eden because of that. But you're standing outside, and you're not appreciating the depth, the inner connection with Hashem that the mitzvahs generate. And that, therefore, by knowing this, we will have, before we do a mitzvah, We'll prepare for it and do it in a better way. In either case, every mitzvah brings us closer to Mashiach, whichever way we do it. And ultimately, when we do a mitzvah, it will also lead us to do it in the better way until this will be revealed into the entire world. Have a wonderful day. Mitzvah Hashem will see you tomorrow.